Major Slack videos. Well, yeah, the name is Slack. Thanks for coming back. Let's walk through some more Horizon Zero Dawn. So that was the in-game tutorial. Now it's time for Slack's tutorial. Um, there is a reason why the official Horizon Zero Dawn game guide is 800, 831 pages long. It's because there is so much to cover. I could easily do a 10-hour video explaining all the game mechanics. Of course, you don't want to watch a 10-hour video on all the game mechanics. Um, so I'm just going to do this... Um, video is going to be primarily about field testing skills. We have three skills points to spend. You may be wondering how should I spend these skill points. That's what this video is going to be all about. First of all, let me go over some very like basic things about the game. Um, starting with skill points and skills. You buy skills by spending skill points. We have three skills points to spend right now. Uh, we earn more skill points by leveling up. The next level uh, is 3,000 XP. We have to get up to 3,000 XP to earn another skill point. That's the way it works. Uh, and it, the how much XP you need for each level, it's very simple. Um, just take the current level you're at and add three zeros, and that's how much XP you're going to need to get to the next level. It's that simple. So when you get to level 4, you're going to need 4,000 XP to get to level 5. When you get to level 5, you're going to need 5,000 XP to get to level 6 and so on and so forth. All right. Um, all these skills here are unlocked because you see they're highlighted. They're ready for purchase. All you have to do is just spend one skill point and you get that skill. You can get any three of these first tier skills or you could spend one point in a first tier skill which will then unlock a second tier skill and then spend your next two points on that second tier skill and the third skill third tier skills cost three points and the fourth tier skills also cost three points now what should you do um and to get into that in a minute uh, i've got a special save worked up where we can field test a lot of skills this is where we are right now okay that's the starting point over here is where we're eventually going to do our first main quest, this strider side here. This area here is just rife with striders. There's eight striders and three watchers. So I'm going to jump ahead. It, <coughs> it took the trouble to work up a save where I just ran down there and I saved all my three skill points and I saved the game at this campfire. And then we can use that as a jumping off point to just to field test all these skills and show you what you're up against with regards to what is the best thing to do um, with the, these three skill points here. For now, um, some basic movements. On the PS4, if you press the R1 button, you get a light spear attack. You have two weapons to start out with, by the way. You have your spear, and you have your Karja Hunter bow. So it's basically melee attacking with the spear, or shooting stuff with the bow. Alright, it's that simple. And you get more weapons later on, I'll explain about those weapons as we go along. But for now, it's just basically the spear and the bow. Press the R1 button to do a light spear attack. Press the R2 button to get a heavy spear attack. And I'm on the PC version, so everything has been swapped around. On the PC version, you can customize all the controls any way you like. So this way I can customize it. For me, a heavy melee attack is hold down T plus the right left mouse button. But that won't mean anything to you because the default is something else. I've completely customized it the way I like it. All right, so that's a heavy spear attack, and that's a light spear attack. There are other things you can do with light spear attacks. Heavy spear attacks will down most, not most, pretty much all small machines. So you do a heavy spear attack, boom, he goes down, he's staggered for a few seconds, and you know, you can have your way with him. <laughs> um, if you have the critical hit, Skill, for example, when an enemy is down, you can instantly kill him by getting up close to him. You see the critical hit prompt and instantly kill him, just like it shows there. Very, very useful. Um, if an enemy is downed and you do a light spear attack, often you'll find that you actually swing right over the enemy, which is kind of annoying. Um, and you don't want that happening if you're in heavy combat, because once you've taken the trouble to down an enemy, you want to take advantage of the fact that he's down and kill him off quickly. One thing you can do, instead of just pressing 
uh, the light spear attack button, you can jump up and then press the button and do a sweeping down the attack like that. So jump up, press the light spear attack, and she always swings the spear straight down, which is great for an enemy. Let's just say this Ridgewood is an enemy, right? Okay. The enemy's right there. You've got him down. Jump up. Like that. Do that two or three times on very hard and you kill a downed enemy. That's assuming, once again, that you don't have the critical hit skill. All right. Another thing you could do uh, with a light spear attack is, by the way, get used to dodging. All right. Dodge your face off. Get that finger muscle memory working with dodge. Dodge all the time. All right. You could dodge in any direction. Just, for example, hold forward, press the dodge button, and she dodges forward or rolls. This is called a roll. Run back, dodge, and she rolls. Go that direction or this direction. All right, very useful. One thing you do with the light spear attack. This is great for hunting animals because it's the same thing. You know, you're chasing a rabbit or you're chasing a turkey or whatever, and you're swinging away, and the animal is too small, so you keep swinging over the animal. One thing you can do is dodge forward and do a light spear attack before you come out of the roll and Aloy will do the sweeping attack, this low sweeping attack. So once again, roll, see that? And that's great for hunting animals. Really works great. Or you can follow it up with the combos. Let's say you're following, following a boar. Sweep, boom, boom. And that'll finish it off on very hard on normal i think it only takes two so it's like sweep boom and the board is down next uh the bow hold down the l2 button to aim the bow hold down the r2 button to draw the bow release the r2 button to fire the bow it's that simple okay l2 hold down r2 release fire the bow um, make sure that the bow is completely drawn before you fire. And if you want to cancel a shot, so hold down L2, hold down R R2 to draw the bow. Uh oh, I changed my mind. I don't want to fire a shot. Just release the aim. Release the aim first, and then that's that way you don't waste a shot. Um, I think that's it about the basics. Uh, heavy attacks we covered. These things here, these are training dummies. There are, if I recall correctly, 23 training dummies to be found in the game. Destroy them all and you get an achievement. There is no strategic value to this whatsoever, except the achievement. That's Well, that's not a strategic value, it's just an achievement. So I'm not going to bother with them, but just for demonstrational purposes, do a heavy attack and you blow them away. Boom! That's one training dummy down. Boom! That's two training dummies down. And boom, that's three training dummies down. If you look in your notes, just go to your menu and go to notebook, go down to statistics. Here is the number of training dummies you have destroyed so far. Okay, so I've done three. Like I said, do them all and you win an achievement. I'm not an achievement hunter, so I won't be bothering with that. So don't bother pointing out that I missed any because I don't give a damn. I'm not doing them. Sorry, it's just not my thing. Everybody knows I'm not an achievement hunter. All right, so I think that's about it. Let's jump ahead to that save. Um, once again, this is not part of the walker. I know a lot of people are going to get confused. And is this part of the walker? No, it's not part of the walker, but this is just for demonstrational purposes. In part three, we're going to pick up right here, exactly where we left off, and we're going to start playing the game. This is just for demonstrational purposes to do some field testing um, on all these skills here to show you exactly what they're all about. Okay, here we are right near the Strider site. I've got all my skill points ready to go. This is a big area highlighted for the purposes of the point of the spear main quest, which is our first main quest. Uh oh, here come the authorities. You done? Quiet, yeah, we're doing a walkthrough here. All right, now let's get to it. Silent Strike. Everybody and their monkey's uncle always gets Silent Strike and Lure Call to start off with. I don't blame them because that's what I did too. In fact, right up until two weeks ago, that was, to me, that was the way you started playing Horizon Zero Dawn. It's, it's, I'll, I'll just show you exactly what this is all about. Silent Strike, if you just hover over each skill, you get a kind of like a little movie to show you what it's all about. We're going to get Silent Strike 
and to lure call just for demonstrational purposes okay so we got that silent strike you could down any enemy if you're in stealth mode and he's right right up close lure call you can use that it's a tool and you can use it to call an enemy over so here we are in tall grass this area here has eight striders and three watchers let's get close to an enemy sneak over to that tall grass over there and cycle through your tools until you have lure call activated look in the bottom left corner of the screen that's lure call see that there All right let's give it a shot press your tool button and that strider has been alerted and he will come over once he gets within range you'll get the critical no sorry the silent strike prompt press the button for the silent strike and you do an instant kill and it's that easy Okay, here he comes. There's the silent strike prompt. Press the button. Instant kill. Go back into the tall grass. Or sneak over to some other tall grass. Rinse, repeat. It's that easy. What happens though, always, is stealth breaks down. Often you get... Here, it's happening right now. These two striders saw a dead body. So they came over to investigate. Now what do you do? Because if you do a silent strike on this guy, the other strider is going to get upset. It's going to go hostile, and he bolts. And they all bolt. They stampede, and just leaves the watchers. And now, now, what do you do? Because you've invested everything in silent strike. So it's either try to hide or do open combat. And open combat is a lot more difficult if you've thrown away your perk points on Silent Strike and Lure Call and maybe something else. Um, but if you're really good at stealthing and you're really patient, um, that doesn't have to happen. You know, you can just wait it out and make sure you're always like hidden. If they come over, for example, when those two striders came over, I could have just sat there and waited it out and then they eventually get tired of looking around, they walk away and then you just rinse and repeat. But it gets kind of tedious because you just like have to like wait out a lot of timeouts where like you know they're suspicious and you wait it out and then you do some more stealthing and it's it's easy but it can get tedious and when stealth breaks down you're left with open combat and you just got to deal with it or run away <laughs> right that's one option another option which I think is a way better option this is something I just recently discovered and been and now I'm totally convinced I'm like a total critical hit fanatic now forget about silent strike and lyrical critical hit that's what it's all about and this um, is an instant kill on small enemies and all you have to do is just down them and you can down any small enemy by simply doing a heavy attack so let's demonstrate that all right here we go critical hit let's get that skill You can actually do a stealth game with just critical hit. Let's just stick to the tall grass. Heavy attack, he goes down, critical hit, instant kill. Of course, now they're all going to bolt. But I'm going to show you later on where if you like carefully single out enemies, you can actually do a stealth game with critical hit. But this is an example of what happens, you know, now we're in open combat, all the striders bolted, and we just left with the three watchers. So now we got to deal with them with open combat, but we have options because we have critical hit. All we have to do is just down them. So get your dodge on. Dodge that stun attack. If they bob their head down to the right, that means they're going to lunge at you. 
or you could rush them. There he lunged. Heavy attack. He's down. Oh, I missed. I don't know why he didn't get down. Down. Critical hit. Instant kill. And look at that. 100 critical hit kill bonus XP. Versus... 25 stealth XP when you do a silent strike. He's down. Critical hit. 100 critical hit. Bonus XP. And this one's already damaged. He's got to. Now, like I said, I'm going to demonstrate later how you can actually do a kind of like an ambush game where if enemies are... Let me see if I can pull this off now because this is not, this is not the ideal place to do it. There's not a much better place to do it. Let's reset. Critical hit. All we have to do is just isolate an enemy. Lure him over. You forgot to get lure calls back. I know, we don't need it. Be advised that lure call can be replaced with rocks. Let's see where this guy is going. He's patrolling around there. Here we go. How about this guy right here? To lure him over, all you have to do is throw a rock at your feet. There you go. It accomplishes the exact same thing as lure call. And when he gets close, do a heavy attack. Down he goes. Critical hit. And Bob's your uncle. There you go. Stealth game with critical hit. Rinse repeat. As long as you're careful, you get way more XP and you have options when stealth breaks down. This is why I'm such a big fan of Critical Hit now. Silent Strike, Silent Strike. <laughs> Hi, my name is Major Slack and I used to be a Silent Strikeaholic. <laughs> Hi, Major Slack. Yeah, Silent Strike has ruined me. No, no. Critical Hits all the way, in my humble opinion. Look, this guy, this Strider, he saw the dead body, so he would come over and, and investigate. And we still got our stealth on. What do you know? And you're getting a lot more XP. Let's see if we can lure another one over with a rock. Throw it at your feet. Comps is the exact same thing. If it doesn't work, just get closer. Lure call has the advantage of having a greater range. But you can do the exact same thing with a rock. Throw it at your feet. There we go, got his attention. You can actually get a trifecta. If you pull it off right, do a heavy attack, you down him in cover, do a critical hit, and you get the critical hit bonus and the stealth bonus. Heavy attack. Critical hit. Didn't do it that time, but it's doable. And check this out, I still got my stealth game on. See what I mean? So <laughs> that that that's what it's all done. This guy's gonna come over and investigate because he saw a dead body. Keep the streak going. Let's 
probably gonna break down now because that guy's gonna see. Heavy attack. Critical hit. And they're they all saw him, now they're gonna pull. But that's an example of how you can do a stealth game with a critical hit. Okay, why not Silent Strike and Critical Hit? Best of both worlds. Uh, this is what I thought too. After going cold turkey on Silent Strike for about a week, I said, yeah, what can I hurt? Just have a little bit, a little hit of Silent Strike. So I got the Silent Strike skill, and I realized in certain scenarios, uh-oh, Silent Strike overrides Critical Hit. This is one of those scenarios where, um, okay, we're taking on a Scrapper here, skipping uh, ahead to around part four, part five of the tutorial where we learn how to take down Scrappers using a shock arrow to the uh, power cell. And here Scrapper's right underneath me, he's in tall grass. I'm gonna hit him with the uh, the Warbo shock arrow. He's downed. Once he's down, we can drop down into the, top, the tall grass and do a critical hit and get a trifecta. Here we go, watch. Machine kill, critical hit, and stealth kill bonus. Now, if you mix Silent Strike into the mix, what happens in this exact scenario is you don't get the critical hit bonus. What happens is the game will prompt you with a silent strike and that's it. So it's possible to get silent critical hit and stealth kill bonus if you don't have silent strike, but it's not possible to get both if you do have silent strike. So yeah, basically silent strike in many scenarios will override critical hit. So yeah, just give it up, people. You can you can do without Silent Strike. Just get just give it up. Go go cold turkey. You can do it. You can do it. And don't get me wrong. I'm not saying go cold turkey on Silent Strike throughout the entire game. Um, I'm just saying hold off on it. You know, because later on you you may want to get these skills. Actually, these two skills here: Strike from Above and Strike from Below. I find them highly situational. Uh, the only skills that I think are really worth a damn in this this whole strike skill tree are these three here leader strike strong strike and strong strike plus but those like i said only later in the game when you really need them you know when you got the spare perk points but in the beginning save that perk point what am i saying skill point save that skill point you don't need silent strike you can do without it yeah critical hit rocks and lure call pfft, you don't need lure call unless you're like you know you de definitely eventually need lure call for these three skills here but this is all about uh this is combat override, this is combat override, plus this is call map. Um, that's only relevant when we, when we actually get the override skill. So like for now, let's say like up to uh, the point where we get the override skill, we don't need lure call, you can do without it. Save your, save your skill point. Um, next, it's all about hunter reflexes or concentration. I much prefer concentration. Some people swear by hunter reflexes. I can't seem to to make good use of it. Um, let's get them both. Okay, here we go. Hunter Reflexes and Concentration. These are both slow-mo bow skills. Each one of them slows the combat down for a, certain, for a short period while you're using or aiming the bow. This is when you're doing a jump or a slide and this you just simply activate by pushing a button. This, in my humble opinion, as far as superior. This one has a cooldown time, but the cooldown time is really fast. Let's start out with Hunter Reflexes. I always thought that this was a garbage skill because I sucked on the PS4. Uh, now that I'm on the PC, I, st I, st I can do better with it, but not much. Really not much. Uh, the way you use it is aim the bow and then just jump up and you get slow-mo or slide while you're aiming. So run, slide, aim, and you get slow-mo. Best thing to do is to aim your bow, draw your bow, and then jump up and you get slow-mo like that because everything's already ready. But the, as you can see, you're dropping down as you're getting slow-mo. So I find that, like, I just don't find that that useful. I'm moving now. See, my aim is moving. Plus, typically, the enemy is moving. So those two things combined, you know, I find I have maybe a maybe 50% success rate at best trying to use this successfully. There's a watcher over there. Let's see if I can nail him in the eye. There we go. Shot up some armor, but that's a bit it. 
see, I, I kind of suck at this. I really don't like it. so on and so forth. Some people swear by it, I can't stand it. I really can't put it to good use. And it's not just a PS4 thing on the PC. I just, I don't know. It's not, I don't have a high enough success rate with this to really put it to good use. I much prefer concentration. Concentration, you just simply activate. Let me just reset everything. Yeah, you just press a button, activate, you get slow mo. You don't have to be moving, you don't have to be sliding, you don't have to be jumping, nothing. Plus, concentration leads to two really kick-ass skills, double shot and triple shot. So you're setting yourself up for some really kick-ass skills here. Plus, concentration plus, which is, this is what it's using on the PS4. I just loved it. It like increases the, the duration of concentration. And this one here, fast reload, this is fantastic too. So this is four fantastic skills right here. Plus this one, but this one is highly situational. But yeah, this is a great skill tree to work down. Whereas Hunter Reflexes, it's just a short skill tree. It's just these two and that's it. it Balanced Dame is a pretty good skill, but after that, it doesn't branch out to anything else. So this is why I much prefer Concentration. Let's just go test it out. All you have to do is just press the button, whatever it is. And you get slow mo and you get a zoom, but it only lasts for a certain amount of time. And then you get a timeout. See, it's filling up again, but the timeout's fast. So I don't really find the timeout at all inhibiting. Not at all. And it's way better because you can be like, you know, perfectly still. And then you could use the same tactic throw a rock at your feet. Get a watcher to come over and then use um, slow mode to, s to shoot him in the eye and get an instant kill. There's the watcher right there. Oh boy. There you go. And they all bolt, but that's okay. This is just for demonstrational purposes. Two for two. Three for three. See what I mean? I find this way more useful. But hey, different strokes? Post a comment. What do you prefer? Concentration or hunter reflexes? I see I've read people on some gaming forums, they gaming forums, they swear by hunter reflexes. But I much prefer concentration. Right, that's that. Next, what else have we got here? Um, we did that. This is highly situational. We want to be really super sneaky, get silent drop. So when they drop down, nobody hears you um, landing. And then that leads to low profile, which just makes you more sneaky. Later on, we're going to get some gear, which gives you like bonuses to your sneak power. For example, some gear will give you or mods will give you like a 10% bonus to your sneak power. That's exactly what this does. Your basic sneak power is 10% and this adds 10% so it's now 20%. So it makes you more sneaky. Um, this also leads to longer dodges. I found this very useful. And finally, quiet sprint, fantastically useful when you're running around, you don't alert enemies. But this is something you want to invest when you have the spare skill points. You know, when, you, when you've got your, your priorities already taken care of then you want to start working on getting more sneaky i wouldn't work on this right away because if you're careful you can be sneaky enough to get through the opening part of the game so that's that critical hit we already covered next precision and precision plus uh as you can read light spear attacks have increased chance to knock armor knock off armor and components i tried getting these skills when i had some spare skill points and uh first of all what it's supposed to do, according to the official game guide, is 
double your tear damage on your spear. I don't see it actually doing that. Let's get them both. Actually, should have uh, I should have shown you did the tear damage on the spear below before. Okay, let's just restart. I mean, just because it doesn't show doesn't mean it's not in effect. But I would like to actually see, you know. Okay, so here's our spear. I'll get into more about exactly what tear damage is later on in the walkthrough. But tear damage is that stat with the shield with the kind of like the rip shield look on the the right side of the screen you see weapon damage and it's the second stat 26 the ripped shield that's your tear damage that's your current tear damage on the spear all right now what i would expect to see when you get these skills is to actually see that increase with your spear so let's just get them see some kind of change I'm not saying it's bugged or it doesn't work, but you know, just the fact that you don't see it. See, there's no change. It's still 26. And I've tried using um, this, and I, I just don't see the point. I mean, I can't, even on the PC version, I can't expect to reliably hit any one particular part of an enemy with a light spear attack. There's just no precision whatsoever. I mean, in fact, <laughs> these, in my opinion, it's kind of a misnomer because melee attacks are the least precise attack in the game. I'm not going to go up to an enemy and go, okay, I'm going to try to knock off his shoulder armor with this light spear attack. That's just this out of the question. No, I can't even do that with a training dummy, let alone a live enemy coming at me, moving around. It's just forget it. I can do that way easier with a terror blast bow or tear blast arrows way easier so i i don't know i don't see the point there's a whole bunch of for example if i wanted to try to knock the blaze canister off one of these let's just try this i'm going to try to knock the blaze canister off of a strider. Right. No way. Enemy has to be downed. That's the enemy has to be down, then you can get a clear shot at it. But even even still, um, like I said, I tried it on a practice dummy, saying, "Okay, I'm going to try to knock off this particular piece of armor." Couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. There's no there's no precision to light spear attacks. By contrast, using the bow, just the default bow, the default Karja Hunter bow, no skills required whatsoever. This is how easy it is to remove the blaze, blaze canister on a strider. Done. Done. So, and later on in the game, like I said, you're going to get the Terror Blast bow, Terror Blast arrows. You don't even need the Terror Blast bow. You're going to get Terror Blast arrows, which give you much better tear damage. Why? But hey, like I said, if you're into using melee attacks to remove components or armor, all the power to you, but there are, in my opinion, there are way easier ways of removing armor and components. Way easier ways. So, uh... Precision? I don't know. Okay, my opinion, they're garbage skills. But I don't want to rain on anybody's parade. I know there's people out there who you who swear by them. You know, I've seen them in game forums talking about, you know, precision, 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 but no, I would never use them. Um, lure call, we already talked about that. This is, so like I said, this has to do with the override. You can leave that alone and just use rocks. Healer, this is a short skill tree. I would only use this if you intend on taking a lot of damage. Um, you're rolling with the slackster, so you know the model. Stick with the slack and you will not get whacked. So don't don't worry about this, you know. 
uh, healing faster. No, no, we're not going to be taking so much damage that this is an issue. And this doubles the capacity of your medicine pouch. As you can see here, we have the big red bar in the top left corner of the screen. That's your health bar. Below it is the green bar. That's your medicine pouch. That gets filled up by picking um, various herbs. Like, for example, not this. Maybe this here. There we go. And watch this. going to fill up the medicine pouch. See the little green cross there? That means the medicine pouch has now been filled up twice. Okay, so we could potentially heal our, heal our health bar two whole times. With this perk here, Herbalist, this will double that capacity so that you can actually hold four complete health bars in your medicine pouch. That's what that does, but like I said, uh, you're not going to need that. If you're following this walkthrough, you're not going to need that, so don't worry about that. This is a great skill tree to work down. Next to this one here, which works down to double shot and triple shot, this, this is what I would think is a priority. This first and this second. Gatherer, which gives you just a lot more stuff. You gather resources, you get a lot more. Um, you want to get that as early as possible because let's say you get it halfway through the game, you missed out on all the opportunities that you're gathering in the first half of the game. So it makes sense to get this right away. If you have any interest in this skill tree whatsoever, get Gatherer right away, at least. Scavenger, um, this is all about having the chance to get, I think it's called Machine Scavenger Box. Okay, let's do this right now. This is going on a rampage with uh, the scavenger skill. In my humble opinion, I would say it's about a 10% chance of getting machine scavenger box when you have the scavenger skill. Um, let's give it a shot. I'm just going to go on a rampage and kill as many enemies as I can. Typically, the loot, like see that loot indicator there? It will show green when you get a scavenger box, but you can't rely on that because um, if you get a mod in the loot, then it also shows green. So we're gonna have to check them all. I can still get the upper hand. Whoops. I got stunned. Okay, smoke him if you got him. This could take a minute or two. I'm playing really sloppy. Really sloppy. I would never do this. Here we go. This might be it. Here we go. Machine scavenger box. That's what it looks like. That's what you're looking for. The scavenger skill gives you a chance to get one of these babies. Okay, and it's not going to show up in your resources. It's going to show up in treasure boxes. So there you go. And you have to open it up, and we got 10 metal shards. This is typical. You get, could get 10 of any component that that particular machine gives up. So, say for example, you take down a strider and you get a machine scavenger box, you could potentially get 10 blaze, or any other machine that gives up wire, for example. You could get 10 wire. So this is a good way to get like a lot of resources, which I think is it's pretty good, but I don't like bonuses based on chance, but um, like I said, it leads down to some really good skills. Or did I mention this? Maybe I didn't. Yeah, this skill tree leads down to disarm traps and tinker. Tinker is one of the best skills in the game because um, this will allow you to remove mods from your weapons and armor, whereas before you can. So if you put a great mod into a certain weapon and then you replace that weapon, your SOL because that mod is lost but with Tinker you can that's another thing you can do with Tinker you can swap mods in and out of weapons and armor anytime to suit your particular needs if you're going into a melee situation 
put some melee mods on. If you're going into a stealth situation, put some stealth mods on. If you're going into a situation where you need some fire resistance, etc., etc., and so on and so forth. So this is, I always push straight for Tinker because it just opens the game right up. Plus, disarm traps. This will allow you to take back any traps, and especially tripwires, because tripwires, uh, you'll see later uh, when we, I demonstrate using tripwires. Enemies, like when you put tripwires, all of a sudden they get like super brainiacs. They go, oh, there's a tripwire. Oh, I'm not going to go there. I'm going to go around. It's it's absolutely infuriating. So, <laughs> anyway, so I'll show you that later. But yeah, this helps with that. You can just pick up the, the tripwire and lay it down somewhere else. All right, so there you go. Good, I'm glad I actually got a machine scavenger box. Um, these three skills here, this whole skill tree, I believe, was added by the DLC. I don't know anything except the Horizon Zero Dawn Complete Edition. That's all I know. I don't actually know Horizon Zero Dawn before the DLC. So I just learned this recently that that skill tree, I thought this was, I thought this was normal. But from what I understand, this skill tree didn't even exist in the original game. This, is, this was added by the DLC. These five skills here have to do with, once again, the override skills. I'll explain about them later. These three skills here, I think, are complete waste. Um, shard Salvager. Disassemble any resources for 50% of their mineral shard value. Why would you want to do that when you could just go to a merchant and sell it for full value? Uh, this is for people who hate fast traveling. Right now we have to craft fast travel packs in order to fast travel to any campfire and go get to a merchant quickly. But later on we're going to get the golden fast travel pack which will give us unlimited fast travel to any campfire. And that's fairly early. So at that point getting back to a merchant is easy. So I would, I would never get that skill. This here is, you know, I would get this if it was a first tier skill, but since you have to get this to get that, I don't know, increased chance to lose skins, bones, lenses, and hearts. If you're going for a specific kind of skin that you need to craft something, maybe it's worth it, but other than that. And this here, Hoarder, um, you can readily increase your resource inventory. Once again, this only applies to your resource inventory, but just getting all the upgrades. So go here to crafting, carry capacity. Here's your resource inventory. Get all the upgrades, and that'll give you plenty of space. And you can just do that, you know. And what, just so you know, Hoarder increases resource inventory slots by 20%. That applies to your current amount of resource slots. Not like a set amount, but the current amount. So in fact, the best thing to do is to craft all the resource satchel upgrades, all of them to max out your resource satchel, then get that skill. Because that you get the most bang for your buck. Because it'll be 20% of all those slots. But at that point, you don't need it. You got so much space in your resource inventory. It's like, I don't know, spending three skill points for that. I've never found a need to do that. So all, all these three skills, to me, complete waste. I, But Hey, different strokes, different folks. I think that about covers it. Yeah, that's all we need to know for now. So let's, oh, wait a minute. What I didn't do was, um, balance dame. That's where you can like, See these ropes here? Let me just demonstrate this. I never get that either because it requires you to get hunter reflexes and I don't like hunter reflexes and it's a short skill tree. Hunter reflexes and balanced aim. This is a useless skill to me and then the skill tree ends there. There's no further you can go. But this will allow you to fire your bow on those rope bridges. Kind of situational, but it could be useful. I wouldn't get it. Uh, 
Up you go, Aloy. Okay. Prime up there. Down here. And uh, yep. Okay, so we got some rope bridges here that go over this whole complex now. Normally, when you're tight roping like this, you can't aim your bow. But with the balanced aim skill, now you can. So, for example, you could shoot off the blaze canister from that strider there. This is gives you the option of firing your bow while not being confined to these little platforms here. You can fire your bow anywhere. So yeah, this could be useful. But personally, I wouldn't get it. I find that I can... These platforms are useful enough. So just go back to a platform, you can do the same thing. Alright. I think I covered everything. All the rest we'll cover as we go along because it'll be more relevant as we're in the middle and like deeper in the game. All the, the rest of the stuff will be much more relevant. Trying to explain it now is just like, you know, that, that's the basics. So let's just reload our original save. Keeping all that in mind, this walkthrough is going to proceed as follows. There you go, got lots of combat. Lots of fuel testing, lots of combat. Okay, so this is what I'm gonna do. This is my new favorite way to start. Concentration, definitely. Critical hit, absolutely. And gatherer, absolutely. And then I'm gonna push hard down this tree here for disarm traps and tinker. All right. So here we are where we left off at the end of part one. I'm going to get those three skills and this is where we're going to pick up and at the beginning of part three and we're going to start playing the game. All right, so thanks a lot for watching and if this walkthrough helped you out, hey, post a comment. I'd love to hear from my target audience and don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel because it helps me out and um, helps you out too because you get notified uh, whenever I upload a new video. All right, so there we go. Horizon Zero Dawn. It's on, bitches. Let's do this. All right, see you next video. Hey guys, real walkthroughs like these are an endangered species here on YouTube. For a complete lowdown on the YouTube video game walkthrough scene, check out my Patreon page and please consider making a donation to yours truly, Major Slack, to help keep real walkthroughs alive on YouTube. You can donate as little as $1. That's $1. That's all. That's all it takes. All right, thanks a lot. Really appreciate it.